Hello everyone. Uh, I trust you guys are all doing okay. Um, in this practical session, uh, I will be taking you guys uh, on the um, pra uh, practical number two, which is the natural response of a second order circuit with uh, energy storage of two types. Okay. Um, like you can see on page uh, one point six. A second order circuit, like the one investigated here, contains a capacitance as well as an inductance, while the avoid double circuit resistance provides damping. Right. So we have um, three natural responses in this case. We have uh, the damping, the water damping, we have the over damping, and the critical damping. Right. So this type of circuit uh, can be viewed as a representative of all systems in which different types of energy stores, store energy stores are present, and where an exchange of energy as a function of time is possible. It is also representative of all systems that can be modeled with uh, a, con a concentrated element in such a fashion that their behaviors describe ordinary differential equations of second order with constant coefficients so the circuit in fig 1.1 is a pre it's a supply pre-constructed s1 and s2 are basically electronic switches which are repeat repeatedly open and close at a frequency of uh, 100 hertz and it's uh it said uh, when switch one is closed switch two is open and vice versa. And when switch two is, is open, um, is closed, uh, switch one should be open. In this manner, the natural response of the LCR circuit consisting of the rightmost lobe in the figure can be measured on the oscilloscope. So as you can see on Fig 1.3, we have the N, which is the control, uh, which is the control circuit, which controls the switching action uh, of the of the two switches, right? So, as you can see, we have um, uh, this uh, our 220 volt, which will be converted to a 12 volt uh, DC uh, and fed to the two switches. And here is actually the control uh, circuit, which will be controlling the, the switching action of the switches. So, in this case, we'll be using a, a, voltage, go, uh, a, a voltage switching control. To in LTS spice uh, to be precise. So uh, I will come back to the circuit. Uh, let's just see what uh, this paragraph is saying. They say the voltage response of the capacitor will be used during this experiment. Okay, that is this part. Okay, uh, so we have to set up the variable uh, resistor in such a manner. Here is the variable resistor in such a manner that the voltage response of the capacitor is on is under damped. Okay, so from the voltage response waveform, we have to determine the poles of the system and uh, plot them on the complex plane. Then we repeat these uh, values for um, critical damping uh, and over damping. So we have to tweak uh, these values uh, of the um, this value of the variable resistor to get uh, our various uh, natural responses. Okay. To get a various waveform, be it the critical uh, of a damp or, or the under damped case. Okay, so and uh, the second part uh, says we from the from the complex plane diagram we, uh, from the complex plane diagram and the known capacitance. So we have to give this capacitor value. Then we need to determine the value of the inductor as well as the values of the resistor for each of the three cases. And also, we need to set the variable resistor value to zero. Then we determine the poles of the resulting system. And for measurement, we determine the resistance of the wire in the inductor. Uh, that is uh, maybe with a, uh, with a multimeter. But in this case, since we're doing a simulation, uh, we don't have a, apparently we don't have a multimeter on the LT spy. So I will I will give you an idea of what um, can be done in this case. All right, so this is the circuit where uh, we will be, uh, this is the circuit which we will have to implement uh, on LT spice. Uh, like I said in my previous uh, demo videos, uh, we have to do this uh, at the end of the semester in the, in the, practical, in the practical lab. Uh, so uh, we're just waiting for um, uh, the right time whereby the, we will be permitted to go to the lab. So apparently uh, the lecturer is, uh, 
The Alexa is making a provision for that, so uh, but for now we need to do it on LT Spice, uh, uh, like uh, using the simulator. Okay, so with the uh, with the pattern of response that you can get, um, you can actually conclude if it's uh, an underdamped or a critical or uh, an overdamped uh, uh, system. Okay, and also theoretically, uh, I think uh, your lecturer must have given you an idea or to know if a circuit is under damped uh, by using the, the damping factor. And we know the damping factor is uh, directly proportional to the resistor values. Um, resistor values, uh, that's for a series pat uh, pattern or a series circuit. And for a parallel uh, circuit, uh, the damping factor is inversely proportional to the resistance. So. Um, that is just to give you an idea of um, the, the theoretical confirmation of your practical part of your practical simulation. So after doing your simulation, you should be able to use your theory to confirm if your results are, are okay by considering using the, the, the proportionality of, um, or, of your, or, um, uh, your damping factor with respect to, to the resistors or the resistor values. Okay, so we know that um, for a second order circuit, uh, it might contain two capacitors or two inductors uh, 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 in LT in SPI. So to, in, this, in this particular case, uh, we're just using uh, one inductor and one capacitor with a couple of uh, resistors. Okay, so uh, basically the key challenge uh, in this practical the key challenge in this practical will be connecting uh, and simulating the switches. Uh, I don't know if you can see uh, switch one, switch one here, and switch two. So that is uh, a big, a, a, a basic challenge here. Okay. So for the capacitor, we we'll need to set the initial value of the capacitor to zero. Okay. I'll show you how to do that on LT Spice. Uh, and also, we will be using a transient uh, simulating analysis and also uh, operating DC operating point. But most importantly, uh, uh, it's your it's a transient uh, uh, analysis that will give you more insight of uh, what your circuit is is actually representing. And and also, for the inductor, we need to set the initial current also to zero amp. Um, that will be done. Uh, I'll show you that how to do it uh, by uh, clicking on the on the component on LT Spice. I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Then uh, also, we need to understand and how to control and set the switches in LT Spice. Uh, remember, in LT Spice, you need to use a Spice directive. That is um, when uh, when you when you need to control the switches, you need to use a, a command in LT Spice. Uh, you need to you need to set a model. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Then also the switches um, are also controlled using what uh, uh, through. They are also controlled uh, by by using a power supply or by powering them up. Uh, okay. So I'll show you also how to do that. Uh, so the positive terminal of the switch should be uh, connected to uh, maybe a twelve volt, and the negative should be connected to the ground. And in this case, um, you, it might either be a one or a zero. So, but in this case, it's been specified in our practical that it should be a twelve volt, okay, and a zero. So it's going to span from zero to twelve volt, okay. So our delay is usually set to the switching time, and in this case, they said the switching time between the the two the two switches must be hundred hertz, okay. The frequency must be hundred hertz. So that means um, our period will be a uh, one of a hundred hertz, okay, which is a zero point zero one seconds, okay, for the period. Then we need to use uh, a single pole. In this case, our switch will be a single pole, a single throw uh, switch, okay, to model uh, our system. Uh, then also, like I mentioned before, we need to use our power sources uh, for our switches to function. All right, then. We need to know. Suppose we need to know. Our interest is also to get um, the, the 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 energy stored in the capacitor. 
from your theory uh, i believe you should know your energy start should be half uh, the capacitance than the voltage squared all right so we know the voltage uh, we know the voltage and we know the capacitor from a circuit so you can also obtain um, a graph which uh, depicts the energy stored in the in the capacitor all right so because we're doing this on simulator uh, we will entirely replace S1. Remember a transistor, as you can see here, and a diode here simply represents the switches. Uh, from theory, you know switches, you can use transistors uh, to model your switch. You can use uh, diodes and transistors to model your switches, okay? So in this case, we'll entirely represent, we'll entirely replace uh, this component, S1 and S2, with a switch, which I will show you on LT Spice, all right? Uh, which I'll, sh I'll show you this on uh, on LT Spice. Uh, then I think we can get into LT Spice and and see how you, you can hook up the the circuit P one point three. Okay, so the very first part of the experiment or of the practical is to uh, build the circuit on LT Spice um, in a manner that the LRC consisting of the right most of fuel can be measured on the on what on our oscilloscope in this case we'll be using our our LT spice uh, to 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 show or, or to depict our natural responses okay so um first thing first this is uh, my LT spice um i think you guys must be very used to this by now so what you need to do is uh we'll create a new schematic we'll create a new schema schematic then now uh, the very first thing I would like to do first, uh, I would like to uh, pull up my my switches. So I will go to the um, the miscellaneous components here, uh, and I will just type the W uh, S W or just you can type switch. You can type a switch, basically, or just S W, and uh, the component for switch is going to pull up. So. Um, I'll rotate the switch. I'll rotate my switch by using Control R. Okay, I'll place my first switch this side. Then I'll place another switch this side. So we have two switches. So these are voltage control switches. Okay. These are just a voltage control switches. For this one, I'll I'll also um. Okay. Uh, I will pull up um, capacitor. As you can see, my capacitor should be in the middle. My capacitor should be somewhere in the middle. All right. Um, then I need um, from the circuit. Remember, I'm using the circuit, so I, I believe you guys all have the circuit. I need this resistor here. Okay, I need this other resistor here, and I need this variable resistor. Remember, on LC Spice, you can't get a variable resistor uh, component. So in this case, we're modeling the system using a direct resistor, and then we have to now um, change the values, or uh, we have to, to, to augment the values for a particular range and observe uh, our response, our natural response, to tell if, it's a uh, which uh, which response it obeys, all right? So I will I will need to pull uh I will need to add uh, three resistors. Okay, um, I'll just come here. This is my resistor. I'll need to place two resistors like this. Okay, need to place one here and another one this side. Okay. So in this case, these two resistors are representing these resistors here. One is representing this, and another one is representing the variable uh, variable resistor. Right, and then I need another resistor. I need another resistor. So I'll pull this, also rotate, and I'll place uh, this resistor here. Okay, I need to align my, I need to align, um, so I'll just use this, uh, it's, a, it's 
to move i need to align this to be on the same line then i'll need to align this to be in the middle of this s2 to be in the middle of s2 and r3 okay then i'll need an inductor okay i'll need an inductor yes my inductor so i'm just gonna place my inductor somewhere here right i'm gonna place my inductor somewhere there then i will need let me make it a little bit nice and let me zoom it okay so that we can see it clearly i'll need um another i'll need three sources okay i'll explain to you guys why we need three sources like a voltage source so the first voltage source i will put it here to power up i'll put the voltage source here to power up the s2 okay i'll put it here to power up s2 i'll put another one here to power up uh, s1 all right then i'm going to put i'm going to put another one here okay which is going to power up our circuit just like you can see from the circuit here all right because why i'm doing this is because for you to control s1 and s2 using this n our n here the system because remember they said n is a circuit to control the switching so uh, i'll show you how you can control the switching using the power sources as uh, v1 and v2 all right so um i'm going to now wire up uh for protective purposes uh basically so i'll just add some some fuel resistors to the switches okay so i'm going to add a resistor here and another resistor here this is just for protection to protect my switches okay so uh, i will now wire this circuit up Okay. Right. As simple as that. Okay, let me make it zoom it in. Then uh, I'm gonna also connect this to this point and also this to the to this part okay then uh, i'm gonna go and connect what i need to do is i want to align this i just want my circuit to look clean so i'm going to align this with a positive terminal uh, i'm going to just align this uh, as you can see here so that i should have a space to wire up the circuit so i'm going to move it a little bit to the left i'll move this one a little bit also to the left then i'm going to move this to the left then zoom in a little bit to give me space remember the main ways to do this and um the very important thing is to get the required results so you can also devise a means in order to wire up the or in order to power up your switches all right you are not limited to to this is a demo as as uh, your, your lecturer rightly said this is a video demo just a guide so i'm not showing you a step-by-step -step guide but actually i'm trying to give you a clue or an idea of what uh, you need to do then uh, I need to connect my I need to connect my switches. So what I need to do is um, I will connect this to this resistor here. Okay. Then I will also connect this to this uh, the donor part to this resistor. Then I'm gonna take this top part and I'll put it to and why I'm gonna wire it to. The positive uh the 
begging pardon I think I crossed the line so I'm just going to take this from here and then I'm going to take it this side alright then I'm going to do the same thing for this other circuit F3 for a wire okay just like that then I'm going to take this oh, I didn't connect here okay then <coughs> I'm going to also bring this one to I'm going to bring this one to this part okay I don't want this 5 or uh, resistor 5 to, sh to be on the line so I'm just going to move it a little bit to the right, okay. Undo by using the, the drag, I'll highlight this part, okay. Then I'm gonna move it a little bit this side. Uh, let me move it again, okay. Then I need to align this to fit on the positive of switch one so I need to connect this up here perfect so now I need to give this um, I need to ground this okay I need to ground this and it's also ground this give it a common ground then I need to ground also my negative terminal like I mentioned before of the switches okay then I also have to give a reference ground here. Okay. Then now I think my circuit is complete. I just need to give them values. So I'll start with I'll start with my switch. Uh, I'll start to configure the, the parameters for my switches. Alright, so or perhaps let me start with uh, the resistors. I'll start with a smaller value, maybe um 470 this is a random value so you have to uh, you have to do uh, for different values so this is um, this is actually my uh, let me say let me rename this by saying uh, a variable this is my var resistance okay my variable resistor let me put it that way then um, I'm gonna give this one Apparently, I'm just gonna give this one. This one have to be um, not a variable resistor. It just have to be one resistor, maybe one k. I don't know. It's up to you. So long as you give you the results, then you can do your mathematical calculations or theoretically to get to prove it. Then we also have to give uh, this one a value. Uh, I'll give this one uh, maybe ten k or I don't know. Let's, use 10, let's just use 10k for demo purposes and see what we get. Then we need to also give this um, um, our voltage source uh, some parameters. So giving the pause value. Okay. Just click advance, then you use pause. So in this case, um, I will say my initial value uh, for my circuit initial voltage should be zero then uh, it's specified in the practical that we should give it a 12 volt okay like you can see here like you can see here so it must give um here 12 volt this is my 12 volt on switch one okay so i'm giving it a 12 volt here then um, my delay, I will give my delay, I don't want a delay for my circuit, uh, for the voltage uh, supply, so I'll just give it a zero. Then for my T on, I can give it a very small value, maybe 5 nano, or 5, five nano seconds, or 5 nano seconds. Uh, remember your T rise and T4 should be the same, that is, uh, should be the same. 
then um, remember they said I'm going to give it a frequency which is much more say like um, the one which was commanded in the practical so uh, to get the period from the frequency to, which is 100 hertz I will give it a 0.01 uh, seconds then I will give the period should be the time the period uh, should be half of the time okay so I will give it a 0 0.005 seconds okay then um, I will give my capacitor maybe a 0 0.01 micro uh, no yeah 0 0.01 microfarad okay then um, I will mention in the introduction that you must set uh, you must set the, the initial uh, the initial current here should be zero okay the initial voltage of the capacitor must be zero so what you need to do is you need to hold um what you need to do for it to come up remember i said in my introduction you need to set the initial uh, voltage of the capacitor to zero volts and the initial current of the inductor to zero okay right so uh, what you need to do is you need to hold down your um, your control key and you click on the capacitor then now you can see where it says value 2 so you can give this uh, you can give this maybe uh, IC okay equals to 0 uh, 0 volt okay then also you need to give this data same thing you give it um, The initial um, voltage there also. So what you need to do is you also need to give this uh, value zero, the current. So I see. Equals to zero. Needs to be zero amp. Okay. So here it should be VC, okay? Here should be should be zero. Then uh, we need to give um our pulses. We need to give our switches um some parameters here. Sorry, I didn't give a value here. I'll just give it a uh, random, maybe 100 uh, milli, 100 milli Henry for the inductor. Okay. Then, now, let's set up the, the, the power, uh, the voltage supply for the switches. Okay. Same thing, we'll give it a pause signal. So uh, we initial in this case, we, they said of one more switch, when this one is on, this one is off. Like when S1 is on, S1 should be off, okay? So as you can see here on the circuit, uh, let me just show you on the circuit. When, S, when switch one, S1 is closed, switch two, S2 is open and vice versa. So the idea behind that is to make sure you give them opposite values at initial for uh, let me start with let me start with um a switch one okay i will give it a pulse value of uh, with initial voltage um my initial voltage here will be zero meaning it's initially off okay then then i will give it a 12 volt as you can see we must give it a 12 volt then uh the delay period the delay time will be 0 0.05 milliseconds okay 0 0.5 uh 0 0.05 um 0 0.05 0 0.0, 0 milliseconds just like that okay then our T rise and T4 I also give it five nanoseconds. Then uh, our T on. In this case, uh, I will give my T on as um, 
let's first of all uh, put this for the period which is uh, half which is one over the frequency which is 0 0.01 hertz then the t on should be the time for the pause duration should be two times that of um, the period right it should be half that of the period that we your pardon so it should be a 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.005 right uh, seconds then so uh, on, on H2 we need to interchange this uh, initial and V on we need to uh, interchange them just to give it that switching ability right give it the switching ability so we need to interchange them I'll just move this a little bit this side for, uh, for it to be visible then I'm going to give this also a pause voltage then the previous one as you can see uh, we need to give it uh, initial should be 12 meaning initially the, the 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 switch s2 should be on then i'm going to give it you can switch them around guys uh don't be stereotyped don't be stigmatized with this result only you can switch them and play around so i'll give it 12 volt then i'll give it a uh, v on zero then the delay i'll also give it 0 0.5 milliseconds then my t rise also uh, i'll give it five nanoseconds a very small time will suffice then uh, my t on also uh, 0 0.005 seconds and my period is 0 0.01 seconds oops okay yeah that's great so usually then the end cycles just leave it blank okay and you hit okay then now uh, i'm just gonna put this a little bit nicer this side or at the top just where it can be much more visible then um, i'm i'm going to level this note i'm just going to give it v underscore uh v cap okay i'm just going to place it here just so when we simulate we should get uh we should be we should be able to recognize uh, those values okay so what we need to do now is we need to give um remember uh, in the introduction i said um uh, there is a spice modeling for this switch so to do that you have to go to uh, operating the spice directives then you just click there then you have to give it a command for this uh, switch to work you must give it a command uh, this is the command dot model uh, sw which is the, the name of the switch then sw again then uh, just open brackets and close okay so when you do this you tell uh, spice uh, to take into account this switch it's called the, the spice directive for the switch and you place it somewhere here okay so now uh, what we need to do now is what we need to do now is we need to uh, run the circuit mm, yes i believe everything is uh, in place so you need to do something similar to this i don't want anyone to do copy and paste you must uh, do a research, you must modify your circuit. This shouldn't be what you need to just copy and and submit, okay? So do your research and improvise like an, uh, like an engineer and you have to improvise uh, your practical. Improve from what you see because this is just a demo. It's giving you just an idea of what you need to do so uh, i will give the um, i will edit the parameters here i will say my runtime i can give it a 0 0.01 okay 0. very small time you can change it to give it a big time you see how it looks if it's okay just so it shows you a good response so i'm going to start with a small time okay then uh I'm going to run my circuit. 
or it tells me uh, we can't find definition of R. Um, okay, I haven't given a value to one of the resistors. Okay, uh, R4 and R5 is complaining, so basically I'll just give them maybe 1k, just a protective resistor, not too big, uh, and 1k. Then uh, I'm going to do the simulation now. Usually I like to make it big. Okay. It's giving me an error. V cap on non parameter VC. Okay, so it's completing here. Oh, it's completing. I think I should give it C. Let me try this to see what we get. Uh, okay. Still complaining. This one is fine. Okay, in this case, I think I should just give it a value V, not VC. Let me put V and see what we get. Okay. Okay, perfect. It doesn't complain. Meaning, uh, successful. Successful. So, uh, apparently, I gave uh, a wrong. Um, name for the i was trying to set the, the 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 voltage of the capacitor to zero so apparently you must do it like this okay v is equal to zero volt then i'm going to toggle this basically okay to make it a little bit nice and clean because i want my circuit to be presentable so um what i can do is i will make this in three plots okay just give it three plots. Then the very first one will be for S1, the second one will be for S2, and the third one will be uh, my voltage across the capacitor. So the very first one, uh, I'll take. Uh, I'll just click here. Then I'm I'm gonna take this value. I'm gonna take it here. Okay, the voltage across this. Okay, meaning, uh, remember we gave it, uh, it's uh, on after, uh, okay, then we gave some time for it to be on, I think we gave a 0 0.05 milliseconds, so after 0 0.05 milliseconds, you see, it becomes, it comes on, okay. After zero point of uh, somewhere here, the S one is on. Okay, zero point zero five milliseconds. So now let's zoom this back and fit. Then for the second plot, I'm just going to di display this. Okay, so initially this one is on. Okay, then when this one is on, this one goes off. So I'm going to zoom to fit. You see when this S1 is on, as you can see here, as you can see here, then uh, S2 is on. Okay, so what I can do is um, I just want to make sure this represents my switches. So I will, uh, I will add I will add some nodes there to identify my switch. So what I'm going to do is I will place maybe S S1. Then I'm going to place S1 here. Then I'm going to place S2 here. I'm going to edit this. Just put uh, here S2. I'm going to say OK. Then I'm going to re-simulate again. Then I'll just take this vertically. Mm. 
thing you know how to do this so i'll take the very first one here for s1 okay see vs1 then the second point the second uh, graph i'll take it here s2 then for the third one i'm gonna take it across this capacitor perfect i'm not gonna comment i'm not gonna say anything uh, uh students guys uh, it looks something i can tell you even you can tell that what is happening the natural response of this uh, beautiful circuit i'm not gonna comment it's left for you to work it out all right guys it's left for you to work it out it looks nice and clean so now what you need to do now is you need to tweak these values here you see vr okay so the very first part i have answered the very first part okay I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell you if it's uh, which response is left for you to figure it out or you can use your theory and you confirm it practically. So, um, <laughs> we see here when you say in the manner this, the natural response of the LR, uh, LCR circuit consisting of the right most loop in the figure can be measured on the oscilloscope. Okay, so that's like an oscilloscope. So, then when you go down, they said the voltage response of the capacitor will be used in this exp experiment. Then they said set up the variable resistors in such a manner that the voltage response of the capacitor is underdamped. So that's the very first part. I'm not going to tell you if the capacitor or the resistance, um, the variable resistor value is for underdamped or critical or, or, or underdamped or over them okay it's left for you to figure it out to work it out then from there they said from the voltage response waveform determine the poles of the system and plot them on the complex plane perfect many what this is a very beautiful uh, circuit here okay like you can see the charging time of the capacitor it goes up then it comes down you can zoom this out to see what is happening okay so after uh, about 50 millisec uh, microseconds the capacitor start charging okay when switch um switch one is on the capacitor start charging then at some point uh, uh i'll just you can click here just to use this um uh, uh, this cursor okay so at, at around this point, um, at 100 microseconds, the capacitor start discharging. Okay, it's a constant value around 100 uh, microseconds. Then after some time, it starts discharging. When switch one is on and switch two is off. Okay, then now I'm just going to zoom back to this. Then um, you can see it discharges uh, at. 50 uh at 50 milliseconds it becomes or at zero let's check at zero at zero volts okay here at 50 milliseconds it completely it completely discharge then now it takes the negative 10 i'm not going to comment on that you are required to do this on your discussion so you have to talk about it on your discussion then it starts charging a little bit, then it drops back down. When switch 2 is on, it starts charging. As you can see, when switch, switch 2 is on, it discharges. It discharges exponentially at 5 milliseconds here. I'll just zoom this a little bit. You see, it starts discharging at 5 milliseconds here, downward. You can see, then when switch 2 is apparently on, it starts charging again. Okay, I'm going to zoom back, then uh, I'll minimize this. So, that, um, that's uh, a very good um, example. Unfortunately, I've not done this before. This is the very first attempt uh, of my variable resistor. I get something nice. Okay, so you are required to play around var r, this one here. Var r. Okay, play around and you get your various responses. Then you comment on them. Then suppose uh, we uh, want to get um, energy stored in the capacitor. Energy stored in the capacitor, we can use uh, something called, I'm going to add a trace, okay? 
This is a bonus, guys. This is a bonus. You're not uh, recommended or you're not, it's not compulsory to comment on this, but just a bonus. Just add a reference. Um, we know that what um, the voltage stored in the capacitor is half time the capacitor time the voltage squared. Okay, so um, the expression for this in order to get a graph of the capacitor or the, or the, or the energy stored in the capacitor, we need to say um, we need to say zero point five. Okay, times. Uh, I'll open up a bracket, then I'll say what is the value of my capacitor. It's a 0 0.01 micro, micro, uh, like you can see here, guys, it's here, 0 0.01 micro farad multiplied by, multiplied by, you open up the bracket, V cap, okay, the voltage across the capacitor. Then uh, it should be squared. So I'm just going to do this. Um, I'll close it. Then I'll say another one. I'll open another bracket. Then I'm going to click again. Then I'm going to close it. I'm going to close it. So uh, this is our V squared. Then I'll, I'll just say OK. Perfect. Nice and clean. So the the part where you have the the blue the blue graph it shows the energy that is stored in the capacitor. I will not dare dwell too much. I won't dwell too much into that. Okay. Then uh, we can also uh, let's let's go and see what they're asking us here, guys. Um, I think when you get your, from here you can get the coordinates, the, the voltages and the time, then you plot them on your complex plane. Just get the, them, uh, the values uh, on this graph, you can extend, you can expand them. You can choose for a particular duration, then you get the coordinates and you plot them as per the question on the complex plane. Then they say, determine the pulse of the system and um, and plot them on the complex plane. Then they say repeat this for critical and over dam cases. I've explained it. Then from the complex plane diagram and the known capacitor value, determine the value of the inductor as well as the capacitor of the resistor for each of the three cases. So after you've drawn this, uh, your, your, after you've drawn the, the, the complex plane, then we know the capacitor value. There is a 0 0.01 microfarad. You can use uh, other values so long as it works. Okay, don't be don't don't just dwell only on what I'm doing. This is a demo. So if I see you doing the exact same thing that I'm doing, you might be penalized. You might not be considered. Uh, you might not be given um, a, a chance of 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 getting all the marks. Okay. So from the complex plane diagram and the known capacitor value determine the inductor. Okay. Uh, so from that, uh, you know the formula. Uh, refer back to your theory. Uh, from the complex plane, you can be able to draw your inductor. I think the formula is somewhere in your books. I'm not gonna give you. Okay. But if you want the formula, uh, the formula for this is actually. Uh, the inductor is actually 1 over 2 pi f squared ordered squared times the capacitor. We know the capacitor. So you just need to do what? Plug in the frequency. The frequency you can get it from the period of your complex plane. Right. So what you can do is you can plug this, then you, you extract what? The, the period and you get your frequency. Then you plug it in the equation to get your inductor, uh, the value of your inductor, which is the inductance. Then also to get um, the value of the resistor for each of the three cases. That one is straightforward. Then also the last part, it says set the, the variable resistor value to zero. Then determine the pool of the resulting system. Okay, so it means what? You must set this value to zero. 
here is 470 ohm so set this value to zero then and you observe what you observe the the system here you observe what's happening okay um, determine the pole of the resulting system then from the measurement determine the resistance of the wire in the inductor then measure measure the measure this resistance with the armature okay all right so uh practically this is achievable with what the multimeter but in your LT spice there are ways of you to get in what your resistance of your inductor that is you can use an operating point dc or operating point d or dc operating point analysis to get uh, the resistance of the inductor all right uh, i'll do that but i won't comment okay remember this is uh, just an, an idea of what you need to do i'll give this value zero then i'll say okay then i'm going to change it to i'm going to change this to uh, i need to stop the simulation uh, I'll, I'm going to change this to DC. Then I'm say, I'm going to say OK. Then I'll say run this. OK. Perfect. So you can see here, you can actually get the in the the resist the the um, here it gives the current. Uh, okay. What we can do is it gives you the current across the L1. I don't know if you guys can see. You can get the current across. Doesn't show me the inductor value. So what you can do is um I'll just use let, let's use still transient. Then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna run it. Okay. Then uh, you can do this to get the current. Still, this gives you the current across the inductor. So you need to play around it to get the in the inductor, the inductance of the inductor. Okay. Uh, figure it out. I think it's very straightforward. It's very straightforward. So if you have challenges, you can send me an email or you can send the lecturer an email. Okay. Um, I'll share my email with you guys on the WhatsApp group. Um, then um, we'll take it from there. Uh, I'll be able to answer your, your queries or your questions. So edit simulation, uh, DC operating point. Run. Okay, that's enough for today. Uh, I've given you guys like enough, more than enough for you to do this tutorial or for you to do this practical. Okay, so um, I'll see you in the next um, practical. Uh, in the meantime, I wish you guys the best and stay blessed. Bye-bye.